to start off this video, I'll be talking about conformity. So conformity is the change in a person's behavior to go along with the group, even if it does not agree with the group. And this can be um, part of the Ash Effect. So the Ash Effect is the influence of the group majority on an individual's judgment. For example, in a classic uh, study of a line test, um, a group of people who were in on the study and one person who was the participant was trying to match the X line to one of these lines. And the people who were in on the study or experiments said that this line, this X line, mostly matched uh, the B line, which you could obviously tell that it's much shorter. And so the power of conformity influenced the participant to agree with the other people that this line was in fact the same line as X, whereas in reality, the correct answer was C. And so the participant um, changed their own behavior to go along with the group, even if they didn't agree with the group. There could be normative social influence, so people conform to the group uh, norm in order to fit in, in order to feel good, and in order to feel accepted. And there's also informational social influence, whereas people conform because they believe the group is competent or has the correct information when the task or situation is more ambiguous. And so the ASH experiments or the ASH effect can be uh, an example for informational social influence. So the participant conformed because they believed the group was competent or had the correct information on the task or situation. Whereas normative social influence might be more of when you're at a um, concert and you want to conform to the group uh, to fit in. So you might sing along. If other people are singing along, you might um, crowd surf if other people are crowd surfing. And you might try to mirror and match uh, the group's behavior in order to fit in, to feel good, or to feel accepted. The classic study on conformity was Milgram's obedience study. And obedience is a change of an individual's behavior to comply with a demand by an authority figure. And in this study, Milgram was the authority figure. And participants were told to test other students, which were called learners, on different memory tests. And these participants provided shocks if they got, uh, if the students or learners got it wrong. And so this was the basic setup. Milgram was here, he was, he was the experimenter. The student was a fake student who wasn't really uh, receiving a shock, but they screamed in the results of a possible shock when the teacher or the participants um, initiated the shock if they got a fake wrong answer. And so when the participants wanted to stop, this guy here, um, after he heard screaming from the students or the fake screams from the students, um, in response to the shocking that he provided, Milgram told him to keep going and to continue the study, even though the participant did not want to. Um, but he ultimately obeyed Milgram um, and started to continue shocking at increased levels to the students, um, which shows how an authority figure can influence people to obey um, if they're in a position of authority. And this really tests a person's obedience um, to a different authority figure when inflicting punishment. Next, we'll talk about groupthink. And groupthink is the modification of the opinions of members of group in order to align with what they believe uh, about the group consensus. And groupthink can hinder opposing trains of thought. So if everyone in the group thinks the same way, but you may not think the same way, um, groupthink can hinder your opposing train of thought. Causes of groupthink include believing the group is morally correct, self-censorship by the group members, 
such as withholding information to avoid disrupting uh, the group consensus, uh, the squashing of opposing group members' opinions, the shielding of the group leader from opposing groups, or perceiving an illusion of unit unanimity among the group members, and also some causes of Groupthink can include holding stereotypes or different negative attitudes toward an outgroup if you're part of the in-group. And then other social influences include this list. So we went over all of these besides group polarization, which is the strengthening of the original group attitude after discussing our views with the group. The social facilitation which is improved performance when an audience is watching versus when the individual performs the behavior alone. So this might include sports games when um, people are watching. A basketball player can have an improved performance while playing versus if they were just at a, a scrimmage match with no audience. And then the social loafing, which is the exertion of less effort by a person working in the group because the individual performance cannot be evaluated separately from the group. So you might have experienced this when you're uh, set up in a group project and one person um, social loafs and doesn't provide for the group as the rest of the group members do. Next, I'm gonna shift our gears toward prejudice. Stereotypes include a specific belief or an assumption about individuals based solely on their membership in a group, regardless of their internal individual characteristics. Prejudice is a negative attitude and feeling toward an individual based solely on one's membership in a social group. And discrimination is a negative action toward an individual as a result of one's membership in a particular group. So the function of a stereotype includes different cognitive thoughts about people, and the connection um, is the overgeneralized beliefs about the group of people may lead to prejudice. And an example is Yankee fans are arrogant or obnoxious. This can be a stereotype. The function of prejudice is affective um, and it has feelings about the people, which include both not positive and negative feelings. And these feelings may influence the treatment of others, which leads to discrimination. So prejudice might include an example of, I hate Yankees fans, or they make me angry. And then discrimination is the behavior or what you're displaying based off these uh, different stereotypes or prejudices that you hold. And the connection is holding these stereotypes and harboring these prejudices may uh, produce behavior that include excluding, avoiding, or biased treatment of different group members. And an example would be I would never hire nor become friends with a person if I knew that they were a Yankees fan. And you could probably um, remove Yankees fans and insert any um, ethnicity, any gender, or any other um, stereotyped groups. There are different types of prejudice. So racism is prejudice and discrimination against an individual based solely on one's membership in that specific racial group. There's sexism, which is prejudice and discrimination toward individuals based off their sex. Typically, sexism takes the form of men holding biases against women, um, but either sex can show sexism toward their own or their opposite shit sex. People often form judgments and hold expectations about people based off their age, and this can be called ageism. Uh, 
uh, prejudice and discrimination of individuals um, based solely on their sexual orientation can include homophobia and prejudice and discrimination on individuals in favor of those who are able-bodied people and discriminating against people who aren't um, is ableism. Next, I'm going to transition to aggression. And aggression is when someone seeks to cause harm or pain to another person. And this can include hostile aggression, which one is motivated by feelings of anger with intent to cause pain. Instrumental aggression, in which one is motivated to achieve a goal um, and doesn't necessarily involve the intent to cause pain, only to achieve that goal. And aggression may be an evolutionary adaptation for a person's survival in order to assert dominance or protect oneself um, or even to protect a mate from other potential mates. And aggression also is in the form of bullying or cyberbullying, which is a repeated negative treatment of another person, often a teen, um, and this occurs over time. Then lastly, the bystander effect is a phenomenon in which a witness or bystander does not volunteer to help a victim or person in distress and instead just watch what is happening. This is often because of a diffusion of responsibility, which is the tendency for no one in a group to help because the responsibility to help is spread throughout the group. So let's say you see a car on the road and you might feel a desire to help, um, but through diffusion of responsibility and the bystander effect, we might think that the responsibility is spread throughout the other drivers. Uh, so we might think that someone else will call 911, someone else will pull over, um, so I shouldn't have to worry about it. Or when we see a fight on the side of the road or in our community, we might not break it up um, if other people are around, we might expect other people uh, to be responsible and break it up. And this includes the diffusion of responsibility and having that bystander effect.